In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <clears throat> the last few chapters of St. Matthew's Gospel before the story of the Passion comprise our Lord's last public advice to the world. He says other things to his apostles, but after this, it's always in private. This is the last public address he makes. It, it would have been on the first few days of the initial Holy Week. And what he says there, if you will, his last advice to his disciples at large, what he says there is always the same thing. It's always different variations of the same theme. Wherefore, be you also ready, because at what hour you know not, the Son of Man will come. He will tell the story of the ten virgins. He will tell the story about the householder making sure his house is secure against the thief. But all these things come down to that same idea. Be ready. Today, Holy Mother Church wants us to consider the last judgment, that terrible day that will decide our lot in eternity. Something that we know with certainty that it will come, but we don't know when, we don't know how. And therefore, indeed, this advice of our Lord to be ready is always important. And that grace of final perseverance is the great grace we're after in this life. It's the grace of graces. Christ says, he who perseveres to the end, he shall be saved. So anything else we can do in life, it doesn't really matter unless we get that one grace of perseverance. And that's something that we ought to put all our energies into pursuing. And that goes for all of us. We all want to achieve that grace of perseverance. There are many different means we could look at to achieve it. I'm going to consider just one of them very simply. A great way to ensure we're always ready to appear before God. And that is the practice of frequent confession. The saints talk about this in very high terms. St. Philip Neri, for example. Frequent confession is the cause of great good to the soul. It purifies it, heals it, and confirms it in the service of God. Or St. Catherine of Siena, more strikingly, go to confession often, for just as the body cannot survive without food, so the soul cannot survive without confession. This is a very necessary practice, one perhaps which we already take to heart, so we may think that this doesn't apply so much to us, but nonetheless, it is something which we must remember and we must try to delve into more deeply. Why is this practice so beneficial to achieve that grace of perseverance? Obviously, at the outset, because it helps us to remain in the state of grace, or at least to recover it, should we have the misfortune to lose it. And of course, considering the delicacy of human life, how easy it is to lose our life, that is especially important. There's no greater thing, no greater means of staying where we should be as far as God is concerned than by recovering that state of grace if we should lose it. But frequent confession goes much beyond this. Obviously, the primary purpose of confession is to forgive sin. But a secondary purpose, still highly important, is to give us the grace to avoid sin in the future. It's what we call the sacramental grace of confession. Every sacrament has its special grace that it confers. Baptism, the grace to live as a good Catholic. Confirmation, the grace to live to stand up for the faith, etc. The grace of confession is to help us avoid sin in the future, not just to forgive those of the past. 
And that is why it's especially important to approach it, even if we don't have anything big to confess. It's also why it's a good practice to mention notable temptations we may be having in the confessional. Of course, tell the priest their temptations. Or perhaps to accuse ourselves of some past sin, just in ge very general terms, because every time we mention something in the confessional, we receive a special grace from the sacrament precisely to fight that which we mention. And we all know how difficult it is to fight temptation and sin. Therefore, this help is truly something very powerful. Frequent confession also helps us to prevent the evil of lukewarmness. Pius XII says, The practice of going to confession frequently prevents spiritual negligence and apathy. And that is one of the great dangers for the practicing Catholic, and I would say also for the religious. It is to fall into that evil of lukewarmness where we begin to become complacent with our situation in the spiritual life, and we don't try to keep advancing. One modern author says that if we are not constantly accelerating, then we are coasting, and we can only coast one direction, downhill. And that is the case in the spiritual life, much more so than in the natural one. If we want to be advancing, we have to constantly be working. As soon as we become complacent to begin to sit back and relax, which is a very great danger, then we begin to fall into this evil of lukewarmness. And at any stage of our lives, we're all somewhere in that spectrum of lukewarmness. At some point or another, we begin to cut corners, and we begin to slack off. And sometimes, usually, God sends us a reminder. And sometimes perhaps we take that first reminder and we come back. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we may take the second or the third. But every time we do, we refuse that reminder, we sink a little deeper. This sacrament, by helping us to examine precisely where we are in the spiritual life, and by giving us God's grace, it helps us to avoid that evil. The last point I would point out for the importance of frequent confession is that it is perhaps the most excellent means to practice virtue, especially the virtue of humility. St. Francis de Sales says, in this sacrament, you practice the virtues of humility, obedience, simplicity, charity. In fact, in the single act of confession, you will exercise more virtues than in any other act whatsoever. Perseverance is a gift, but on our part, there is no better means of ensuring perseverance than the practice of good, solid virtue. And that is especially the case, well, it's the case for all men, but I would say most especially so for the religious. We who are meant to give everyone else the example of virtue. A priest, a religious, we have to remember that first of all, we are men, which means we are sinners. And therefore, we have to take advantage of this sacrament just as much, if not more so, as everyone else. <clears throat> we must make no mistake, there has been no person, religious or laity, who has fallen to a very great depth of sin, who has not first begun to neglect the practice of frequent confession. Usually, when a person's in a bad state, it's the first thing to go. So if we want to avoid that happening to us, a very simple means of doing so is just taking that resolution to go to confession frequently, to never leave off this practice. The statutes of the society oblige us to go at least every two weeks. And that's something we should definitely take to heart, if not even going more frequently. 
for the faithful as well. That's something we should be taking advantage of at least once a month. If we want to stay in the right path, it is a tremendously excellent means of doing so. And also, of course, if we already do go to confession frequently, we should learn to try to make those confessions better. That's something we can always work on. <clears throat> to try to deepen our spirit of contrition. We all have the same things that we confess over and over and over again. That's part of being human. But what we have to be careful about is to make sure that it's not just simply a matter of routine. I check off the box, I went to my weekly or bi-weekly confession, and <clears throat> I'm done with it. I confess the things that I remembered, and that's it. We have to try to deepen our contrition. Remember that in the confessional, we're talking to Almighty God. The priest is just God's instrument. And we're telling God that we're sorry for all these ways we have offended him. If we're not sincere when we say that, then we aren't going to be able to receive half the graces that God could otherwise grant to us. We want to try to <clears throat> take that to heart and ask ourselves, am I really sorry for those things that I confess all the time? Is it something that I really do want to stop? Again, it's normal that we have those same things that we confess over and over again, but are we really trying to make some effort to stop them. Again, it's the human condition that we have those things, but we want to make sure that it's not because of a lack of sincerity or lack of contrition on our part. And of course, we can even go beyond that if we want to make a good confession. <clears throat> Instead of just simply mentioning the same thing over and over again, really examine ourselves and see what is the reason for these things. Why am I falling into this same thing over and over again? And try to get more at the root cause. And there, that confession can be of much more value because it really attacks the root problem within our souls. And also, of course, asking the priest for advice. How do I overcome this sort of thing? I happen to fall into it a lot. And seeing what advice God gives us through the priest in that sacrament. So let us try to take better advantage of this very important practice of obtaining that grace of final perseverance. We pray to our Blessed Mother every time we say the Hail Mary. We ask her for that grace of perseverance to pray for us now and at the hour of our death. And we can be sure that she certainly desires us to take advantage of all those means that God has put at our disposal to obtain that grace. And one of the greatest of them is most certainly this practice of frequent confession. So let us ask her for the grace to have a better, better appreciation for it, to take better advantage of it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.